So for the first three videos of this week, we've returned to the setting and decision theory where we only have one, one player, one agent who is um, solving some optimization problem. Uh, that is, we return to the setting of the very first video of week one, um, but with a significantly more complicated type of decision problem that has taken us three videos to talk about. Um, so now we're going to basically return to the game theoretic setting. So we're going to, so we have kind of two different complexity dials. Uh, we have one for having one agent or multiple agents, which is where, where whether we're in a single objective or multi-objective optimization setting. And the other one is kind of whether, a, kind of how complicated our optimization problem inherently is. Um, so now we're going to have all of the complexity of Markov decision processes, um, but we're going to um, return to a game theoretic setting. Um, so there's a very kind of typical and strange clash of terminology because the thing we're going to study is known to game theorists as a stochastic game and to control theorists as a jointly controlled Markov decision process. Um, so the second thing is a bit of a mouthful, but it's much more informative and maybe you can basically completely guess uh, just from the name jointly controlled Markov decision process what this thing basically is. It's a Markov decision process where um, the actions aren't completely controlled by one agent, but are jointly controlled by multiple agents with potentially different objectives. Um, so this is going to be a type of infinitely iterated game um, and it's going to be a game of imperfect recall. So the players are going to only know the current state and they're going to uh, not remember the sequence of, of past states leading up to the current point, which is um, the Markov property. Okay. Um, so we're going to fix a um, Markov chain. Um, we're going to have some number of players n. Each player is going to have a set of actions that they can do. Um, and then we're going to say that the transition function of the Markov chain is going to depend on the actions of all of the players. And it's going to give you back a joint distribution on the new state and also payoffs for all players. Uh, so in other words, it's a function of this type or in other, other words, it's a conditional joint distribution on the next state and a payoff vector for all of the players given the current state and the vector of all of the actions. Okay, now a strategy, so I've switched back to calling these strategies, but we could also call them policies. Um, so a strategy for the ith player is going to be a function from the current state to the ith player set of actions. And now, as is now completely uh, as you should be completely used to, uh, if we fix strategies for all of the players and we also fix the start state, then stochastically the Markov chain is going to generate an infinite sequence of states and, and also an infinite sequence of payoff vectors, which I'm writing like this. So here now we have two indices. So i is going to vary over uh, the players. So i goes from one to n and j is varying over the stages. So j goes from zero to infinity. And we're going to say that um, the goal of the ith player is going to maximize is going to be to maximize this discounted sum. So here we have a um, a shared discount factor. Um, we could also just as easily say that each player has their own individual discount discount factor. Uh, it doesn't really make a big difference. So here the sum is over the stages j. I here is fixed because that's we're talking about the goal of player i. Um, so we are back in a multi-objective situation. So there is no longer a kind of uniquely defined maxima, but instead we have to deal with solution concepts and different notions of what it means to be uh, kind of jointly optimal. Okay. So this is a very kind of expressive setting for talking about real life situations. Um, so here's a, here's a very typical kind of thing. Um, so the prison's dilemma is supposed to be a simple model of what's called a social dilemma where um, the thing that is individually optimal and the thing that is um, globally optimal conflict with each other. Uh, we can refine this to a kind of more, more realistic model of what would typically be happening in real life um, by playing games on a Markov chain 
And the simplest thing we can do is to have a Markov chain of two states, which we call the good state and the bad state. Um, so we're going to imagine that we start in the good state. And when you're in the good state, the, um, you get a higher immediate payoff for doing a thing that is increases the probability of transitioning to the bad state. Um, so for example, um, if you have a limited, a limited shared resource, like a fishery, um, you can have multiple parties who can choose to extract resources from it sustainably or non-sustainably. Um, and then you can have a good state where the resource is abundant and a bad state where the resource has collapsed. And, um, and so um, extracting sustainably with high probability keeps the resource in the, in the good state. And then extracting non-sustainably with high probability uh, can put the resource, make it transition into a bad state. And in the bad state, um, the, the payoffs are much lower. So there is kind of no resource left. Uh, and then there are, there are different things you can do here. So either you can model this as you're completely stuck and the resource has gone forever. Um, or you can say that with careful management and also luck, um, the resource can transition back into the good state. Uh, so this is like recovery of a recovery of a collapsed resource. Um, so uh, it might have occurred to you, or you might be looking at the slides that, um, the most important example to everybody of this is carbon emissions. So we can, this is an extremely simplified model of uh, environmental collapse, but we can have kind of a good state and then the bad state where like global, uh, global uh, climate systems shift into a different uh, attractor state. Uh, and of course, when you're modeling these numbers can only be estimated from climate models. Um, here's a here's a very different example. So the previous example was extremely economicy. Uh, although I could say um, you, this this kind of situation does also appear in computer science um, when you have um, joint access to a limited uh, computational resource, um, like for example a server on a network with limited capacity. Um, Here's a, here's a very different example. Um, suppose you have a swarm of robots uh, who would like to coordinate over some shared goal, but, um, but they make decisions independently or they make localized decisions independently. Uh, so here's um, a version that kind of gives you the idea of this example, but is uh, it, uh, simplified to an extreme. Uh, suppose we have two robots who would like to cover two areas um, so they would kind of like to get into a state where there is one in each of the two areas. Um, and so we're going to have a Markov chain with four states where, because two robots can be in two different states in four ways, because they can also be in the same place. Um, and then in each round, we're going to say that the robots observe both of their locations, and then each of them can individually choose where to move. Uh, so either to stay put or to go to the other area. And then they're going to get a higher payoff when they're in different positions. So this is a this is an anti-coordination game. Um, so um, I, I haven't written this um, kind of I haven't put numbers on this, but I think you can probably imagine how this is going to look. Um, and notice in this example, even if the dynamics of this are deterministic, so let's say even if with probability one the robot successfully um, moves to the location that it chooses to move to. Um, even if we do that, then um, we can also be in a situation where, um, where stochastic strategies are required. So kind of probability comes back. Um, for example, if we require that both robots or in general, all of the population of robots use exactly the same strategy. Uh, so this might be because, so their strategy might be pre-programmed um, but then the kind of random decisions that they make by following that strategy happen locally. Uh, and, and so if you have a swarm of robots, they can all be pre-programmed in exactly the same way. So they all have to use the same strategy. Uh, so here's an example of a strategy that uh, the two robots could both use in this situation. Uh, if they observe that they're in different positions, then with probability one stay in the same position. And if they observe that they're in the same position, then uh, swap position with probability one half and stay put with probability one half. So that's an example of a, um, of a strategy that if both of these robots have it, they're going to 
uh, quickly converge with probability one to um, to the um, to the state where they're both covering both areas, and then they're going to stay put and get lots of payoff. Okay, um, it's a bit of an aside. This is something that I could have put in um, previous videos, but I decided to put here. Um, so there's a so for the first half of this slide, forget about stochastic games and go back to MDPs. Um, so there's also a thing called a partially observable Markov decision process, which is usually shortened to POMDP. Um, so a POMDP is an MDP where there is also a set of observations. So the agent can no longer perfectly observe the state, but there's a set of observations about the state that they can make. And there's a function that says, uh, given the current state, what observations could they make? Uh, this could also, of course, be a stochastic function because the agent could have, say, faulty sensors or a kind of imperfect sensors. Um, and uh, I won't say the details, but this is pretty similar to a partition of the set of states into information sets. Uh, partitions into information sets are extremely similar to functions out of the set of states and into some set of observations. So now we're going to require that a policy doesn't input a state, but it only inputs an observation. So that's just to say, uh, similar to how in a extensive field game of imperfect information, we were requiring that strategies do the same thing on two different nodes in the same information set. We're going to require that the strategies can only depend on the observation. They're not allowed to depend on aspects of the state that aren't observed. So um, optimally controlling a POMDP as a whole topic in its own right that we're not going to go into. Uh, it involves having uh, probabilistic beliefs about the current state and then updating it after its observation using Bayes' law. Um, so this is also very interesting. So the reason I bring this up now in this video is that in a there's also a thing called a partially observable stochastic game. And we can give each player a potentially different set of observations. So each player is going to have a function that says what they can observe given the current state. So for example, you can have different agents with different kinds of sensors uh, who can make kind of different kinds of observations about the world. Um, so there's a, there's a whole kind of topic here. You can go into a lot of detail about this and it's very, very expressive for modeling. Um, 